Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on Pub Stomp NTG. And in this video, I wanted to focus on my own personal decks. There has been some requests as far as showing off some of my decks that I do have. I do have quite a bit. I do have 14 decks. I know that might be small compared to other people, but these are decks that I'm actively playing. Sometimes I will uh, brush off the dust off of one that I haven't played in a while, but I do play all these decks, whether in CDH, high power, or even casual decks. There's all sorts of uh, formats I do play within Commander by itself. And so with this video, it's basically going to be a brief description of all my decks and the reason why I do like them and the reason why I do continue to play with them. Of course, there are some other decks that I have scrapped previously. I might bring that up in another video where some decks that I have scrapped and the reason why, but uh, however, for this video specifically, I wanted to focus on decks that I do own in paper. So with all that said, let's move on to my first deck. However, before I do start this video, I do want to give my patron shout out to Mr. Waffles. Thank you so much for becoming a patron. You've been a long-standing patron ever since May, so again, I can't appreciate you enough. So without further ado, let's get back into my decks. All right, so the first deck I do have is actually a Tarka. It's actually a mix between a Tarka and also Xenago Scott of Rebels. It's essentially a Dragon Infinite Combat deck. Uh, this is the one I have been playing the most as far as Xenagos goes. And of course, I do love Atarka. So this is kind of a mix between two. You could kind of choose the one or the other commander as far as everything goes. And honestly, this is a deck that I'll probably never get rid of. Honestly, it's one of the first commander decks that I've ever built with Xenagos specifically. And of course, I do love Atarka. I do love how it can be interchangeable. Of course, with this, it's mostly a dragon-themed deck with a Tarka, but you could really get some commander damage out of a Tarka, and honestly, this is the reason why I do love it. I, this is actually a personal favorite of mine because, of course, uh, this is actually the first deck tech I do have on the channel, and I will say it's a little rough looking back on it. I looked at my first video, and oh man, I'm glad I made some progress. Hopefully, I made some progress, but... I'm honestly very happy with this deck and I continue to evolve it with different cards that came out with recent sets. Not so much recently, I feel like there hasn't been as much dragon support. I mean, I think I did put a uh, Bone Horde Dracosaur in here, but aside from that, a very fun deck, one that I always enjoy playing. Next up, I do have more of a recent deck. This is actually uh, Pantlaza Sun Favored, so this is actually a really fun commander. Uh, I do have the little alt art treatment. And this is a very fun commander deck for me. Uh, I do have two different dinosaur decks that I'm currently playing. This is one of them. And I feel like I needed two separate ones because I do love dinosaurs. Dragons and dinosaurs, it's a very common theme for me personally that I do love both. Uh, they're both just scaly reptiles. I mean, I guess if you could consider a dinosaur scaly reptiles. But in this instance, I'm just going to go with it. And so this deck is a very fun deck that I do enjoy playing. I have been playing this more on Brawl. And so... Mainly because I don't have it completely filled out. I have about 98 cards in there. I just am waiting for two cards to go in there. Uh, mainly because I have another deck that has dinosaurs that obviously I put in there on, on top of that. Of course that other deck is Blue and Owen. This one is a very fun deck for me. Honestly, I've been liking it a lot more than Pantlaza. Mainly because I have been cherishing Jurassic Park for my whole entire life. And so seeing it come to Magic the Gathering... Obviously, you know, with the recent videos, I've talked a lot about Jurassic Park. It's one of my favorite franchises ever to come into existence. And so this is a very fun deck. There's actually going to be, I don't know if I posted it yet, but I do have a full uh, gameplay video with Blue and Owen. And so there's some fun shenanigans that you can't can see in there. So as far as everything goes, this is a very fun deck to play. I do personally like it a little bit more than Naya compared to Teemer. Teemer is a very good color combination for dinosaurs having the counter spells to protect your dinosaurs. And so honestly a very fun deck. I do have some ways as far as uh, changing it up compared to the normal dinosaur deck. I am going into a like a survival of the fittest kind of theme. Not the actual card survival of the fittest but I'm going with a survival of the fittest only the strongest can survive. So I went into a little bit of a birthing pod theme where you're constantly sacrificing dinosaurs to get stronger dinosaurs out on the battlefield. I do have a more in-depth uh, deck list uh, if you want to go check it out. Uh, so yeah, this is again again another very fun dinosaur deck that I do cherish. Speaking of Jurassic World, I also do have another character that I absolutely love, and that's uh, Ian Malcolm. And so I actually got the secret lair with uh, Tassiger. 
I don't know if you can see it very well on the camera, but uh, this is actually a CDH deck that I brewed around. And so the goal of this is to essentially get a uh, Tidespout Tyrant or a Holebreaker Horror polymorphed into it so that you could get infinite mana out of some mana rocks. Also, a little bit into the video, I realized that my lighting wasn't the best, so I did adjust that a little bit. So going back to Ian Malcolm, this is a deck that I played a little bit. I played it on local game group on their uh, Friday Night Magic uh, live stream. And so if you do want to go check that out, that's more of a shout out to them. Uh, they're great players, of course. And going back to Ian Malcolm, I feel like as far as playing it, it was a little clunky. I feel like I'm a little bit more lean towards red. And so having that soul type color combination wasn't really doing the job for me personally. I personally like to lean in on explosiveness with red with Dockside Extortionist and other rituals. But again, it's a very fun commander polymorphing into different threats like Nezahal uh, Primal Tide and many other threats I'm trying to think of. But of course, those are the ones I could think of right now. But again, a very fun deck, but one I need to test out a little bit more. Speaking of CDH, I actually do have two new decks that I'm actually brewing right now. Uh, I do have all the deck complete besides the commanders themselves. And so one is actually a Corval deck. Of course, I do have Corval right here as deflecting SWAT. Uh, I actually have it in the deck because, of course, Corval's in the art, so it just makes sense. And so this deck actually is inspired off of the. Uh, Year of the Dragon, and I feel like the Year of the Dragon has some absolutely incredible art. That's the reason why I actually made this deck. I've actually been brew, uh, wanting to brew Corvold for quite a while, but I didn't necessarily didn't feel like I had the right steps to make it. I'm more of an art guy when it comes to choosing commanders, and so when I saw the new uh, Year of the Dragon art, I just knew I had to make it right away. Same goes for this other commander with Niv Mizzet Perun. So when I did see the new uh, Ramnica Remastered anime treatment, I thought, yeah, I gotta have this, and you can kind of see a common theme between these two. They are dragons, they're big and beefy, and I do have um, about most of it done. I do have about a couple cards left, but I do have this cute offer you can't refuse, and so, again, this is also another deck that I am trying to test. I did make two deck techs on these pretty recently. Uh, of course, I wanted to make them, and so, so yeah, these are just some decks that I just want to make and go ahead and uh, play with and see how they do. And next up, I do want to talk about my wife's deck that I did make for her. And so she uh, likes cats a lot. I do like cats too. And so this one is actually a pretty fun deck for me to play. And that's Arabo, Aurora the World. And so Arabo is a pretty interesting one because obviously it has the busted mechanic for casual with Eminence. And so Eminence having that ability with Arabo to buff up uh, your cats uh, in combat is really good. Of course, this is solely focused on cats and nothing else, and I wish I could, I got that secret layer of Arabo, the cute version, instead of, I mean, as much as I like the lion art, the secret layer one is so much better, and so, also I'm a little biased because it looks like my cat Cleo, so obviously I do want to get that secret layer, but it's like 40 bucks, and do I really want to pay 40 bucks for just a secret layer card? Most likely I will, but not right now. Uh, so this is just your basic cat tribal deck that focuses on a lot of cats coming on the battlefield, swinging in uh, for a lot of damage and going for the win. And next up, we do have Megatron. And so this was from the Brothers War. And, well, uh, the universe is beyond Brothers War. I don't know why they put uh, Transformers in Brothers War. Maybe because Optimus and Megatron were quote-unquote brothers. That's the only thing I could think of because of war. Uh, there's an endless war with Autobots and Decepticons. But what I do like about this deck is, of course, it has all exclusively Decepticons that can fit in it. I know some Decepticons couldn't fit in it for some reasons. I think uh, some other uh, colors were outside of it, like blue. But aside from that, Megatron is a very fun commander. Uh, obviously, uh, you could just get a lot of colorless mana off of it and kind of flink different artifacts and kind of go for a lot of damage there. Also, another side goal is using the Mech Titan Core, and so this is a little callback to uh, Transformers with uh, Devastator. I don't know if you've seen the animated series. Devastator is one of those uh, creatures that could essentially uh, transform into one Mega Transformer uh, with like five different Transformers transforming into it. And so the Mech Titan Core obviously represents that by having other artifacts combined into one big giant artifact, and so. Of course, I had to mention that, and I feel like this is a fun deck for that reason. It's a very flavorful reason of doing Megatron and having all the Decepticons in there. 
Speaking of uh, Brothers War, I do also have Mishra uh, claimed by Gix, and it, obviously the flavor win is to uh, get it melded into a Mishra Lox to Phyrexia with the Phyrexian Dragon Engine. And so for me, I'm a big sucker for that. Uh, you probably know if you watch my channel for a little bit, in 2022 was one of my favorite commanders. It is one that I've actually fallen out of favor a little bit, uh, mainly because it's a very aggressive strategy. I try to change the theme up a little bit to be exclusively Phyrexian, having Yogmoth, also Gix Yogmoth Praetor in there, uh, just to really fit that Phyrexian theme. But honestly, it hasn't been doing it for me. I haven't touched this deck in a, quite a while, and so there's a little bit of dust on it. So unfortunately, I think it's one of those decks that I might have to cut. We'll see as we go along in the year, but I feel like for me personally, it's one that I could possibly see myself cutting. Again, I love the card so much, but aggressive strategies aren't very good in Commander. I mean, it has a very good life gain and your opponent's life loss uh, ability, but again, it's really hard to meld uh, Mishra into Mishra Loss to Phyrexia. But again, a very fun deck nonetheless. It's just one I haven't been interested in a while. All right. And with that said, I am going to move on to my next deck, and this one is pretty fun, honestly. I'm a big sucker for big giant creatures and flinging them over, so when I saw Zeotora the Incinerator, I was absolutely enthralled because, of course, big giant creatures, uh, big Timmy plays, that's all I want to do in Magic. Uh, of course, I do have my CDH fun, but I also do have my casual fun. This has a lot of different cool uh, commanders in there. Uh, I shouldn't say commanders, but uh, a lot of cool legendary creatures. For example, there is uh, Zapandra Hunger Dominus uh, that doubles the power uh, and toughness of your creatures. So the idea around that is to buff up your creatures, then later on fling it so that you can do a lot of damage and get some treasure tokens. And also another fun one for me personally is having some of the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty dragons like Junji and also Atsushi. They do have those death triggers, so when you do fling them over, you will get those extra death uh, triggers on to Zeotora, and then you sac uh, you get six treasures on total uh, when you get three treasures from Zeotora, and then three treasures from Atsushi, so absolute slam dunk. This is a fun deck to play. I will say I haven't played it in a while. I want to say the last time I played it was out of pre-release. Again, that was quite a bit ago, so again, a fun deck, but it's been a while. All right, let's move on to... Uh, Phyrexia All Will Be One. This one is a infamous set for obviously Phyrexia starting their invasion to the multiverse in 2023. And so, of course, I had to make a Trax of Grand Unifier. This was a very cool commander. I made this into a CDH deck. I was actually one of the first to believe that this was actually CDH viable. And it's doing very well in tournaments as far as CDH goes. And so, again, I don't know if I'm a big fan of uh, big giant commanders, but here I am being a big Timmy player, and so Attracts a Grand Unifier is a slam dunk. You draw so much cards off of it, whether you're playing the Food Chain lines or if you're using Displacer Kitten. Displacer Kitten is absolutely busted in this deck, especially when you have a lot of free mana rocks you're playing, then you get that ETV trigger again with Attraxa. Again, a very good card, uh, one that's uh, really good in a lot of formats on top of that, because of course you can pitch it to different cards like Force of Will and Legacy at least. And so again, I I feel like this is a very standard, uh, typical Atraxa list that you will see in CDH, so nothing really new or special there, but I thought I would give it a mention because I do play it quite a bit and it's a very fun deck to play. Another fun deck I do want to mention is Bernard Ginger Sculptor. So. This one kind of surprised me out of the gate because I feel like uh, Bernard is absolutely uh, just a blast to play. Like, honestly, every time I play it, it just does a lot of work, especially I'm in that sacrifice theme and Bant. You don't really see that in the color combinations very well. I feel like you really see uh, sacrifice in either black or red in the Racto sacrifice. Of course, this is opposite colorways where you're playing the Bant colors. I will say personally, I'm not a big Bant guy. I'm more of a Rakdos player at heart. And so kind of switching sides and going to this uh, new avenue is very different for me. But I feel like, again, this is a very Rakdos-like commander. You're sacrificing stuff so that you keep benefits. Of course, this is no exception. One new addition that I found really cool is actually Sovereign Okanuk Au, of course, because uh, you are giving your golems the buff with Bernard Ginger Sculptor. And so when you have those buffs, and they're just one ones by the way, you can just keep on buffing them a little by little, especially with Sovereign out on the battlefield. So that's a slam dunk in this deck. 
Uh, recently, I played this about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. I know I played this in a commander night and it was really fun to play. Uh, this is just a typical ETB strategy. Of course, with a lot of the evoke cards, I'm trying to think of the other ones, but like Solitude is a really great one in here because of course you get double ETB to remove two targets. Uh, so again, this is a very fun deck that I do really find enjoyable and one that I'll definitely keep for a while. Speaking of my favorite decks, I do also have a Tali uh, Primal Conqueror, and so you'll notice with the last couple, they're going to be from my top 25 commanders list, so if you do want to go check that out and spoil yourself a little bit more before you see some of these decks, yeah, Tali is a very fantastic commander. I love it. Uh, I feel like it's a little too powerful for casual, and so that's why I made it into a CDH deck. I know a lot of people might disagree that it's a CDH commander, but... Again, there are some legs for it. I feel like uh, Gruel Colors isn't the best, though. Of course, you are in red, so you do have that explosiveness. Of course, Stealing Cards is a very good... Uh, especially uh, Stealing Cards for free, by the way. It's not just Stealing Cards and having to pay their mana cost. You just cast it for free on the ETB. Plus, if you really need to, you just make it on the Blight Steel Colossus on the backside. So again, a very good commander. One that I've been playing for quite a bit. I actually had a uh, gameplay video with it, but... Unfortunately, I realized that nobody's voice was going through uh, on that audio, so unfortunately uh, that video had to be scrapped. Maybe I'll make another video with the Tully Primal Conqueror and see how it goes, but again, one of my favorite commanders, not only because it's a very powerful commander, but it's also a big giant Spinosaurus that's an older dinosaur. What's not to like about it? And lastly, I do have my favorite deck of the entire year, and that's Sauron the Dark Lord. And so with this deck, it is another CDH deck. I do have a good mix of CDH and also high power and also just casual decks, but I feel like I have mostly CDH decks, especially from this year, because, I don't know, my playgroup uh, likes to play a lot of crazy powerful stuff, so I kind of have to keep up with it. So of course with Sauron, what I tried to do with this deck is I tried to have that scroll frame for every single card that I could. And so of course I do have the one ring in here that has the scroll uh, frame art treatment. I do also have Orcish Bowmasters in there with the uh, scroll treatment as well. So I tried to do as much as I can to make it thematic, but also make it very good. So of course there's your typical uh, Thassa's breach lines that you do have in there within the package. What I do like about Sauron is kind of doing a lot of different things you want to be doing as a commander. It fills your graveyard for Breach. It also draws you four fresh cards. It also protects itself too, which is very good because of course people like to use their single target removal. They can't do that unless they want to sacrifice a legendary artifact or a legendary uh, creature on the battlefield. Again, so that's what makes Sauron very good for me personally. And one that obviously because you're in Grixis colors, it's going to be a very good CDH commander in general. And so having those color combinations makes me excited because, of course, Lord of the Rings is one of my favorite franchises. And that's what's very funny about a lot of these commander decks is, that you'll notice is they all uh, revolve around my favorite franchises. So, of course, uh, Lord of the Rings, also Transformers, and Jurassic World. They also did make Godzilla too, but honestly, I didn't find those powerful enough or really any good. And so, unfortunately, Godzilla had to go. I wish I had a Godzilla deck that was actually really good, but unfortunately, we can't do that. So, I just have those three franchises. But let me know down below in the comments, what is your favorite commander deck that you are currently running right now? I'd love to know, so let me know down below in the comments so that I can see uh, what a commander deck you have to offer. I love to hear some of your thoughts, too. And so, with all that said, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And with that out of the way, thank you for stomping by.